Now, if you're looking for more information on the cross trainer, I would really suggest you look into this Mountain Life's channel as he owns one and also provides videos on how to work on the cross trainer. He has owned it for quite some time, so his knowledge on the cross trainer is definitely there. Anyhow, to continue on the video, there are a lot of two strokes to choose from and coming from a intermediate to maybe a beginner rider's point of view, some of these picks can be a bit daunting. Obviously, many of the advanced riders do not have to worry about that daunting pick on a two stroke because, well, they are good riders and have throttle control and technique on key. But for us riders easing into the intermediate stage, you might be looking for a new bike pretty soon. Now, I have only been riding for a year, but I ride with really good riders. So you can say I am forced to ride some of these hard obstacles, and we all know throttle response and clutching is definitely key on these bikes on technical trails. I remember when I first hopped on a two-stroke, I was pretty timid of that hit. Yes, a bit scary to ride versus a four-stroke, and have to be on the revs for an obstacle, and essentially there is no such thing as crawling up things like a four-stroke. While a two-stroke, you need to be a bit more into the revs, or possibly be really good at clutching. However, if you are looking for similar characteristics of a four-stroke, I highly recommend a beta cross trainer. Now, should you buy the cross trainer? Well, here's where things get interesting. Now, I'm about six foot one, and I did feel a little bit cramped up on the bike, but it's not that bad. I believe with bar risers, that should definitely help. When I was on the cross trainer, it reminded me of a trials feel, where the throttle response is down low with a bunch of low end grunt, and you do not necessarily have to be in the res for it to perform. In fact, it performed best when the res were down low to the mid range. So essentially you can say if you are in the market for a lazy man's bike, meaning you hate switching gears and pretty often you just want to chug up things, you might want to consider a cross trainer. Another thing to think about is initially that two stroke hit. See, the beta does not really have it, and most of the power is actually down low. So if you're a bit concerned about that initial hit from typical two strokes, the beta is definitely a bit more easy on you. But don't get it wrong, the, the down low power is definitely there, and the front tire will definitely pop up pretty easy on you. Now, let's compare this to the TE250i. See, it does have low end grunt, but not like the beta. Being a new rider, sometimes being in the revs when I have to hit certain obstacles can be a bit more daunting. But of course, that initial two stroke hit is always fun. I believe if you are into the technical rides, the beta cross trainer is the way to go versus your traditional two stroke. Now, if I were to compare it to my TE250i, most of these obstacles I have to hit usually needs a lot more momentum because the power comes anywhere between the mid to high end range. Yes, it can make you a better rider at hitting obstacles at speed, but the beta cross trainer is definitely more friendly. It definitely has more torque than my TE250i down, down low. Dude, this is a nice bike. It seems like it just doesn't want to flame out at low speeds. Like it has all this low end grunt, but it's so gentle. Third gear, man, just pulls very smoothly. I'm gonna say the beta is just a lot more forgiving when you slow down. So the key points if you should consider the beta cross trainer, because honestly, if I could have done it over again, I maybe would have bought the cross trainer versus the TE250i for that low end power. But then again, as time goes on, I'm slowly becoming a better rider and actually hitting obstacles in the revs, which is something to think about on your long term riding. Now, these are my opinions if the cross trainer is really for you. First thing is if you really want to be a lazy rider at switching gears and want things to just pull down low. The second thing is if you consider yourself a mellow, slow, chilled rider. The third is if you don't really feel comfortable at hitting objects at speed yet, primarily mostly being in the revs. 
Therefore, if you ride very tight single tracks, such as in this video where high speeds are very difficult, of course, a very good rider can hit these single tracks at very high speeds. The fifth, if you are a new rider essentially wanting a two-stroke but timid of that hit, but look for something you can keep in the long run and probably all you will ever need and maybe just looking for something you can grow into, the cross trainer might be a bike of your choice. And the last one, most of your riding is just slow and technical, kind of like trials where you constantly need to clutch on, let's say my TE250i, any obstacle I hit, that's pretty low speed I always need a clutch or just hit it at speed. Anyhow, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and follow me, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button. That way you can see us grow, see the beta in action and possibly my TE250i. Again, I am a pretty fairly new rider. I've been riding only for one year, so obviously my opinions might change one or two, three years down the road. Anyhow, I'll catch you guys on my next video.